spiritual voice, the voice of Judaism in Europe. And um, we have been in contact with the Council of Europe for many, many years. We received an invitation to have our next standing committee in Strasbourg this coming May. Thank you very much for that. And uh, as you know, the decision of Passé in October uh, made a lot of waves in Israel, in the Jewish world. And uh, we would like to thank you for your very courageous, very steadfast um, um, position of, uh, in support of religious freedom, in support of the Jewish community of Europe. So the floor is yours. I think, uh, uh, please. Uh yes, dear uh, rabbis, uh, when I got the invitation, I was indeed uh, flattered and honored. It is a great pleasure to be with you uh, and to address uh, such a distinguished audience. And I, I would like to say only a few words, but what I would really like to say is I have always been attached to the Jewish people. I have always appreciated uh, being together with the Jewish people. I've been so many times to, uh, to Israel during my political yeah. career. And uh, I also actually like, I, I like to be together with the rabbis because <laughs> all of you, I mean, uh, I don't share your religious belief, but I, have, uh, but I very much respect for uh, Judaism, uh, what it um, means for Europe, and the fact that all of you always have a good sense of humor, and that's what I... Uh, <laughs> at least, <laughs> at least. <laughs> yes, yes. And um, when this uh, issue of um, uh, circumcision came up, uh, I imme immediately reacted. Actually, uh, I think that it was a bit of a misunderstanding uh, how this uh, resolution from the Parliamentary Assembly was interpreted. But uh, it shows uh, how careful we have to be with the words we are using. And it also shows that we need to be aware of what we are talking about. Um, I also seen that there has been a discussion about this in my home country, Norway. And actually today I wrote an article in the biggest new Norwegian newspaper about it because I think it totally goes out of hand because the discussion is very much based on over, um, over perception of things. That everything can, should be put into a scientific, medical, uh, technical, uh, that kind of things which we are used to in, in, in all parts of the world. And, uh, and overlooking the religious aspects. Uh, of it. So I tried to explain this uh, today in the Norwegian newspaper. It uh, already caused a lot of, lot of comments. It shows that it's, it is really necessary to do what is my commitment to uphold the right to religious freedom. That is enshrined in the European Convention on Human Rights. And uh, uh, no European countries have uh, legislation concerning uh, circumcision. That's a matter of fact. There is no judgment from the Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. I would say that if it had been a judgment from the court, it would be to uphold the right to religious uh, freedom. So this is, together with the freedom of expression, the basic principles in the European Convention on Human Rights. And we have to remember this convention was drawn up right after the war. So there were reasons for why one put these important principles into the convention, which has been upheld, upheld on the European uh, continent during all these years. So, and I would like to uh, end by saying that Jews contribute a lot to European culture. Uh, and uh, the right to have a Jewish life on this continent must be protected. And I'll say this also because we know for sure that when the Jews are being uh, feel unsafe, many others have reason to feel unsafe as well. So the issue of protecting the minorities 
on this continent is actually the issue of protecting uh, basic rights for all the people living on this continent. So I'm very, very glad to be together with you. I, uh, I am looking forward to see all the other rabbis, and uh, it is a great honor to be here, really. I, uh, it's uh, really moving for me. Thank you. Thank you for having a very good uh, experience with Norwegian. We are uh, working according to the initiative of Bandewik, the former Prime Minister of Norway, on the Code of Holy Site, and we are actually pursuing it, and we are doing a very good work with all the religious leaders of Israel. We have a common uh, dialogue with the Palestinians and the Christians in Israel and the PA, and our moderator is Tom Bakovic. So, so you see that we are in the good hands of Norwegian, and we certainly very, very happy of your involvement and your courage and your initiative here to help us also. Thank you. Director of the Norwegian Institute for for Peace, and I was uh, the president of the board when this uh, he, when this was started. I worked. Uh, in that institute for four years before I went to Strasbourg. To he came to Oslo, huh? and according to his invitation, we came to Oslo, and that from then on we continue with his initiative. Yeah, that's right. And also, Mr. Bakovic is a good friend of mine from the Labour Party, and I know that he is doing a great job on the religious dialogue in uh, in Jerusalem. To come here, and I would like here in this room people to know. It's not so normal that you came here knowing the subject on which we are dealing. It's not a respect of my minority. The Jews of Europe are not a minority. You know, there's, an, there's a false expression. We are part of Europe. Yeah? And, a, and a circumcision for every parent is a basic. I don't, I'm not wearing a hat, I'm not so religious. Yeah, and I hope that God will forgive me. But, but it's a basic. It's not acceptable that, in, that there is a debate if on day eight a baby should circumcise it, yes or no. And it's up to the Council of Europe. And this is your chance now to show all Europe, not the Europe of the European Union, but the entire Europe, that this is not even a subject. So circumcision on day eight is a basic. If this is not happening, there's no more Jews life in, in Europe. And this, you as Council of Europe, you, you cannot accept it. And all the statements which you made, which was very courageous, are nice, but unfortunately not enough. The Council of Europe has to take this as the mission that this should be stopping a debate. Every baby on day eight can be circumcised. Full stop. But I wanted on a level of uh, health, because you took that decision and it was not even courageous because everybody would say courageous. It's your position and it's going with your morality, ethic, understanding, education. So how could you help us to find and approach <coughs> and develop the knowledge of the other people throughout you have been yourself convinced? How can we convince the other without going to war, without speaking or crying about anti-Semitism, without uh, complaining, just knowledge? Yeah. Well, that again today in my own home country to publish an article, I took also on board what you said, namely that it's an obligation and it shall happen on the uh, eighth day. Uh, I explain why mm -hmm. this is important. And, uh, so I, I, I believe that political leaders in, in Europe should stand up and uh, give facts. Give facts. Because what I discovered after I published this article is that there are so many misleading uh, things in the debate and uh, distortion of history, mixing it up with the policy of Israel in the, in, on the West Bank and Gaza and all this. So it's, it's a terrible. It's really terrible. Uh, to, add to, to add to what you have said, uh, um, what um, I think those legislators who, uh, in Passé who voted for that, they didn't realize that what it means for a Jewish community not to be allowed to do circumcision. Because basically what this means, 
is that um, they have to emigrate. Why? Because if, let's say, a country X, whether it's Norway or it's Luxembourg, decides it's against the law, then even if the parents, let's say, take their baby to Belgium, or to Russia, they're, gonna, they're going to break the law because they're all citizens of the country. Now, historically speaking, we are close now to Christmas and to Hanukkah. It usually falls the same time. Now, Christmas is followed in the Western world by New Year's. It's eight days after, Christ uh, after Christmas. The old name for New Year's was the day of the circumcision of the Lord. So, in the Anglican and the Protestant tradition. And uh, this is about Christmas. When we're talking about Hanukkah, the revolt of the Judeans against the Greeks and the, uh, the Syrians was because the Greeks forbade to do circumcision. Now, I'm not propagating the Jews to start a revolution here in Europe. I don't think that we're just, we're just too few, I think. But what I'm trying to say is that it's such a basic uh, part of the Jewish identity, because it will mean basically that the core Jewish community, which is traditional, for them it's a question of to be or not to be, they're going to leave right away. The young people who have children are going to leave right away, and that's the end of the Jewish community. So every person who raises their hands and they vote against circumcision, basically what they say, we don't want a Jewish community among us. And when this debate started in Germany a year and a half ago, we had a press conference here in Berlin. And this is exactly what they said is, we don't realize that for us it is a question if to stay or not to stay. So, and once we said that and we explained this openly, this when a, a day later, here in uh, the Tagesspiegel in, in uh, Berlin, uh, the, the, the next day there was an editorial saying we should listen to the rabbis. And uh, Frankfurt Allgemeine had an op-ed saying maybe instead of forbidding circumcision, you make, should make circumcision to this judge and colonel who took this decision. So, and the next day, Angela Merkel took Angela Merkel took position on that. Says, uh, we look terrible in the eyes of the world, and that's when, in Germany, they passed the law which legalized it. So I think that uh, we, we need to come, the Council of Europe is the moral, the moral voice of Europe. We need your help to be able to to communicate and to explain to Utri and Orbi that this is exactly what it means for the Jewish community. Sorry. And uh, I would like to ask you, seriously, what about your opinion? From where this decision, idea came from? I'm not talking about conspiracy, of course, but it, is it was organized by some group, or it was done, how it happened, by your, by your opinion? From where all this, all this world came from? Just because it would be impossible, why? Now, let's say October 2013, 21st century, why? Now, not before 50 years, not after 100 years. Why now it was, it was done by quite very actively? That's why, tell me your opinion openly, it, how it would happen. Huh? The Assembly of the Council of Europe, which is a consultative body, according to the statute of the Council of Europe. It's not, I mean, um, the decision-making bodies of the Council of Europe is the Committee of Ministers, is the, the governmental side, and the Committee of Ministers where all the 47 governments are sitting. Mm -hmm. And the, bodies, the, the body that is upholding the European Convention on Human Rights the guardian of the European Convention is of course the court and the Committee of Ministers, namely the 47 governments, have the obligation to implement the judgment from the court. So the, the, the Parliamentary Assembly actually in this case cannot speak on behalf of the Council of Europe. The only one that can speak on behalf of the Council of Europe is the court which interprets the Convention on, on behalf of all of us, and I, as Secretary General, being defined in the Convention as the leader of the whole organization, I 
uh, have also to uphold the principles in the convention and the judgment from the court. So, I mean, you have to separate what happened in this consultative body and what is uh, the, uh, the decision-making processes in the organization as a whole. So, the parliamentary, what I'm saying, the parliamentary assembly has no legislative power. So, but of course, I, I understand that you are worried when this comes from a parliamentary assembly. But one also has to read this uh, resolution uh, carefully. I think they, they didn't, as I have heard and understood, they didn't have the, the intention to say that circumcision should be banned or uh, that it should, so to say, put in the, put in the same basket as or compared to, to uh, female genital uh, genital uh, mutilation. mutilation. Uh, which actually in Europe is banned, but circumcision is in no country banned, and there is no ground for saying that the, the European Convention goes in that direction or judgment from the court on the contrary. So this is uh, I will, we need to be clear on, on, on this. Thank you very much, uh, Philip. It's of extreme importance that you come here. Because not only are you speaking to rabbis here, you're speaking to representatives of the Jewish community from different areas of our faith communities, men and women, people who are secular, people who are religious. And it shows that of the, if there's one particular area which is preserved by Jews and has been and preserved by Jews for 3,000 years, it is this particular element which is absolutely central to our identity as Jews. What I wanted to tell you is that we regard this with great severity, principally because this is a solution, so to speak, to a non-existent problem. We don't have people going round Europe complaining that they've been mutilated. And more to the point, for 3,000 years, Jewish mothers have given their eight-year-old baby, eight-day-old baby. It's not binding for other countries. It's a mistake, but then you can achieve, uh, you can adopt a new resolution. And I hope that soon this will happen. But the other aspect is the moral aspect, because even if a new resolution is adopted and this shame is being erased from, uh, from our uh, um, calendar, or calendar or the agenda. There is the moral problem, and the moral problem is, and I'm sure that you are uh, uh, confronting it everywhere in Europe, that more and more voices uh, for various reasons are doubting uh, this custom, and it's not only this custom, because there are other customs that, are, that, follow, that follow this uh, custom, and this is usually in common for Jews and Muslims all over Europe. And as I said, it's a deep moral problem uh, which uh, raises the questions to what extent are people tolerant, uh, to what extent are people ready to uh, agree that, uh, or to, uh, be, to accept other people's tradition, customs, and so on. And this is something that we have to be so, but uh, not, uh, th that's, that's another problem, and I see that this is the, if, there, if we should read it, this is the most severe problem that we are facing. On that, many people voice our country. It was a certain thing which led У нас второе написано, если руководителя выбирают, это без вмешательства Всевышнего не бывает. Uh, uh, we believe, according to Jewish tradition, that if someone is elected to an important and responsible spot, that means that God is, uh, is with them and is uh, guiding them. So we can imagine if you were chosen one out of 800 million for this position. And uh, as you know uh, from from your from your own history, the the Nobel Prize Committee that makes the choices in in the Norway, 
Вы знаете, что евреи практически 40-30-50% получают. Это тоже чудо. Как вас выбрали, то же самое чудо. Поэтому зря ничего не бывает. Значит, мы обречены дружить. As we said, we have to. We have to. Uh, God wants us to be friends and to work together to be partners. So, uh, as the moral voice, as as the leading moral voice of Europe, uh, it's my hope and and my prayer that all of the peoples of Europe will gather around what you stand for, especially the Jews, that we should work together for a more moral uh, Europe. And lots of luck in, in your work. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, to be, put it right and to be tolerant. I would like to put it the other way around. I think the European problem it, it singles out a particular Jewish tradition which is going on for thousands of years and tries to eliminate it. I think there's the question of human rights, there's the question of tolerance, there's the question to what extent it really is in, in accordance with the uh, Treaty of Europe, which is talking about freedom of people, freedom of movement, freedom of tolerance,